welcome. Um, today I have Joshua. Joshua Lovelaju. He's a PhD student at um, the University of Nevada, Reno. So welcome, Joshua. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for taking our time to talk to us today. Yes, yes. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. You. So what do you do presently? And um, let's just start from there before we go to the beginning. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Sir. My my name is Joshua Joshua Lolaju. I'm a graduate student at um, University of Nevada Reno. I'm studying for a PhD in um, electrical engineering. So my option is in um, electrical power systems. So what I look at is um, in terms of research is um, power systems operational control, power system stability, optimization, renewable energy, and then. Um, things along those lines. So currently, I I mean, I just completed my first semester in the program. And Yay. <laughs> it's, been, it's, been, it's, been, um, it's been a good one. It's been an interesting yeah. one. So let's, let's start from the beginning. Now, we, I know we met, was it um, two years ago, one and a half years ago, something like that. Yeah. So com when you look at what you learned during all the preparatory process for getting your PhD position and um, looking at the people you met right now. Okay. Is, is there anything special that, you know, maybe people coming to your field, preparing for engineering positions can do to position themselves for engineering related positions, apart from the broad requirements? Okay, so I think uh, one of the most important thing is that you should try to ensure that you have a solid background. It's very important. So if you are coming in for power systems, try to understand, I mean, the basic things in power systems, because when you get it, you just take it as a revision and you can finish. <laughs> you just revise it within one week and you start doing the main stuff. The so, main stuff. Uh -huh. Yeah, so you need to have a solid background in whatever you are coming in to do. Yes, so, and also you, your programming skills, you need to know how to write programs. It's very important because most of the things we do here, um, they are based on simulation. So you right. simulate real life events. So there is no, I mean, you can't start playing with, uh, let's take for example, 440 KV, I mean, live wire. So, but you mm -hmm. can simulate it on your system. So it's very good to have good programming knowledge like in terms of MATLAB and Python, at least those two right. are very essential. Yes. MATLAB and Python, okay. Yeah. So I think those are the basic things. So, and also just make sure you check what the supervisor is doing very well before you come, because she might be thinking that, oh, I just like this small aspect of what the supervisor is doing, but it's really not the case. So you need to try to be, I mean, conversant with, majority of the things that the supervisor is doing. So if you see some things in the supervisor's profile that is not something you really like or you're not interested in, yeah, it's better to try to look for someone else because you see that at the end of the day, you end up doing all of those things because that is what it does. So you end up doing everything. So, <laughs> so it can be really demanding if you are not solid on those aspects. Yes. Good. So let's let's talk a little bit about the programming skills that you talked about. So what I'm just thinking, what level of expertise do you have to you know have before you okay. can confidently say, yeah, I, I want to okay. make myself competitive for positions. Yes. So okay, in terms of uh, programming skills, for for somebody like me, we took um, programming classes in um, undergrad. So. Oh. I so I did it for two semesters. I did. Uh, was that compulsory two. for you? Yes, it was compulsory. Oh, okay. And it was part of our courses. So okay. I did C plus plus for two semesters. Then, uh, for my undergraduate project, I did some things on MATLAB. So, and even right from undergrad, you use MATLAB a lot. So, because okay. it's very important. Yeah. Then at graduate level, I used MATLAB for my project as well. So I try to, I mean, I use MATLAB everywhere. But in terms of Python, um, 
I program Python, but not like I do on MATLAB. I program with Python, but not like MATLAB. But when you get here, you see that you need to have, I mean, good, I mean, how will I put it now? Average. You be, yes, you need let's, to have good. Let, I mean, let's, say, good. <laughs> let's say on a scale of one to 10, would you say maybe five or four? Okay, on a scale of one to 10, I think five is okay because, I mean, what is important is that at least you can't. You can program and you can always build on that yes because programming is very wide so it depends on what you're actually using it for so if on the scale of one to five i mean one to ten you can give yourself a five i think it's also okay and once you programming is just knowing how to program is kind of like it's key so when you now face any programming language you just try to apply those skills apply those skills and improve on them Yes, so that's and the, the good thing is there are a lot of free resources to learn these things on, on um, I think on Udemy. But do, do you know of any free resource to learn so this thing? You can learn. I mean, for my Python, I use them um, Deep Lizard. Someone introduced me to Deep Lizard on YouTube. So because I'm using um, Deep Reinforcement Learning. Okay, Python. Deep what? I, I didn't get that. Deep Reinforcement Learning. Deep enforcement then it's okay. I'll pull that on the screen for people. Yes. Just like it's just a subset of I mean machine learning and artificial intelligence. Okay. So that's what I do with um Python. So it's and very important. On YouTube. Yes, it's on YouTube. You can easily I mean get good materials on YouTube once you search for it. Yes. So that that's what I do with Python. Then on MATLAB we do I mean general I mean general simulations i mean matlab is very versatile also python is versatile but most times you have many people are more conversant with matlab so it's very good <laughs> good hi folks dr joe here please pardon the interruption i quickly want to share this training we created on how to plan for the niw green card as a student or postdoc this is how I sponsored myself and family for permanent residency in the United States as a student. So I developed this training to teach you how to do this without the help of any employer and without the need to marry a citizen. Okay, so I also teach you how to confidently prepare all your documents and um, we refer you to our preferred lawyers who will do an outstanding job on your case and represent you at an all-time low fee. I've already done the negotiation with them, okay? So, if you are a student or a postdoc, or if you know anyone who is a student or postdoc in the US, please tell them about this, okay? The link to this training will be in the description below and um, also in the comment section below this video. Thank you and um, enjoy the rest of the video. So let, let's shift a little bit away from those special skills, but let, let's talk briefly about the basic uh, needs okay. for any require okay. uh, for any department. So when it comes to a P you are obviously doing a PhD. So do you think, you know, in the US there is a possibility to go from bachelor straight to, to PhD, but do you think that's possible in your field in engineering? Yes, is I mean it's possible. We have I have just in my class I have one particular person, although he finished from this school as well. So he just crossed from bachelor's to PhD. Yes. But yeah, on but the general on the general most supervisors here, yeah, they don't I mean they want you to have your master's first before coming. So right. they prefer having a master's student come for PhD than mm -hmm. someone coming from BSc to PhD. But if you can I mean, prove to them that yeah, what what you, I mean, yeah, what the position is not. I, mean, I don't think is impossible. Good, but you just for the record, you had a master's before. Yes, yes. Completed okay. Master's. Um. Yes. So talking about GRE, I think GRE is also important, right? Because yes, GRE, GRE is very important. GRE and the um, TOEFL, the two of them are very important. Yes, yeah, so for the GRE, at, least, at least at this point in time, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, so for the GRE, you need they want to see that you have good competence in mathematics, most especially mm -hmm. because when you are coming for engineering, it's more of a mathematics than English. So, in your GRE quantitative, you need to see that you have, I mean, good competence in maths. It's 
this place the mathematics is very intense so <laughs> yeah so yeah this intense mass so if you are not solid on i mean just GRE is just i mean knowing how to reason math so when you come here you can always apply it and they always like it as i mean because they like saying okay this student has a good GRE score you can go for all those things so they use it to if you have a good GRE score the professor can use it to kind of like talk on your behalf on why the department should take you in as a PhD candidate. So GRE score and TOEFL score. For, for the TOEFL, if you are looking to get teaching assistantship, it's very important to have a good uh, TOEFL score TOEFL because score. you want to see that this person can communicate very well in English. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you're communicating with other, I mean, undergrads that are born in, I mean, US mm -hmm. here. Uh -huh. US. You need to be able to speak good English to them so that they can understand what you are saying. That is very important. And that's an important point because most people don't say this, but TOEFL is important for teaching assistantship. So if you get a waiver, even if you get a waiver, you want to be careful that at the end of the day, that won't hurt your chances of funding because if other people show those scores and you know there are limited positions for teaching assistantship, those yes. positions will go to them. Yes. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> I, I think that's yes, just one of the truths that our people need to know. I know it's good to get waivers, but if you are going to a competitive environment, know that some people will provide those scores and those funding positions will go to them first before they yes. consider you um, yes. that um, received the waiver. Exactly. It was, I don't know. As of the first day I got into the, I mean, the departmental office. I met um, a professor there. I didn't even know who he was or anything. So not knowing that he was the department, I mean, department chair. Right. So, and the way he mentioned my name as Joshua, is that Joshua, is that Joshua? So he gave me a sense of that, ah, wow, they must have been discussing about me a lot here. So, right. uh -huh. <laughs> so I think when you have the, I mean, those basic requirements, your GRE and the TOEFL, it will speak volume for you and your supervisor can also work on your behalf is a very good one right so would uh, let me get a sense of how many students they they admitted in your set okay so for my current batch we are about um, four yes we are four, four? so yes four. <laughs> i hope people listening can can understand how do they yes, so my myself and three other people so myself, there is someone that finished from BSC here, so we joined also. Then we had um, someone from Iran, so we came from Iran to join. And also, I think the last person was from, I think he's from Bangladesh or so. I'm not really Bangladesh. sure. Yes. Right, that, that's a good mix, mix of um, people. <laughs> so, um, so uh, having a master's is important. I mean, in, in so, to some extent, right? Yeah, Having yeah, those sure. scores, those TOEFL and GRE scores are important. And also programming, programming skills, yeah, especially sure. for those who want to come for engineering related courses. Yeah, so I think those are, those are key points that um, people should uh, note. But I always say this because, you know, it will be those extra requirements, extra requirements that might not be stated <laughs> in the, in, on the admissions page, right? But, you know, sometimes they look at those things in your CV to determine admission and funding. Yeah. So how, how did you get funded, just to, to end this? So basically, I at first, I contacted the professor. Okay. To, yes, to express my interest to join the research lab. Okay. So... I mean, the email I sent, I was just going through it recently. And I saw that uh, I hit a lot of bullet points on what the professor is currently doing. Because when uh -huh. I take the email I wrote and I came here and I saw what the professor is doing and what you are doing, I saw that, well, they are really in line. So, <laughs> so, so, yeah, so when I contacted the professor to the cover letter template that we have on the, the YouTube channel, so I also... I mean, he scheduled an interview with me. So I interviewed with him later in August. And I tried to 
I'm telling what I've been doing and what I hope to do when I join mm -hmm. this group. I, I, I remember all that story, but but like you said, you know, you contacted professors, but you need to have a good idea of what the professor does presently, right? Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. So I went to his web page and also checked some of his uh, publications. So mm -hmm. okay, okay. The end of the publication should give you an idea of what he's doing. What so you should see. Yes, once you read the topic, I mean the topic sentence of his present, I mean, of his paper publications, you should have an idea of what he's interested in. And you should be able to look at, okay, if it's what you also are interested in, then you can go for it. Good. Um, and we we have a template for, you know, sending emails to professors on this channel. I'm going to link it on, on the screen right now. So it's going to show on the screen right now. And um, for the actual um, templates, you will find it in our free course on bestmanacademy.com, bestmanacademy.com. Um, so, um, thank you very much. Um, are, are there any other extract tips that people should look out for? You know? <laughs> well, as that is, I think the, one of the tips will just be make sure that when you are communicating with the professor, don't just try to get any professor try to get a professor that you think, although you might not be able to, I mean, decipher everything based on the interview, but try to get a professor that you think would be really friendly because friendly. your professor is yeah, friendly and welcoming and ready to, I mean, let, let you learn, that is, let you grow. Because if your professor is not friendly, it, it might be really difficult. Yeah, it might be difficult. So coming here, my professor is, I mean, very welcoming. I meet with him twice in a week, Wednesdays and Thursdays. And Absolutely. if you are meeting with somebody that is not friendly twice in a week that way, it's going to put a lot of pressure on you. Uh -huh. <laughs> Every time you want to see them, you'll be like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it but, should be someone, even if you have not done a lot of stuff they ask you to do, you should still be able to meet that person and say, hey, um, I had so so and so and so that prevented me from doing this, but I'm gonna, you know, work on that and talk to you next week about it. You know, that's how you should relate. And yes, you would, exactly. would you agree that um, you know, it might be difficult to know that, you know, before you apply, but from your communication, you will kind of get a sense of, you know, how yes. this person respects their training or something. I think you yes, have that exactly. experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so from communications you can't you can know you can know. Yeah, basically. And also when you get here, you want to at first you even every time constantly you want to try to leave a good impression. So right. when you get here, your first impression really matters a lot. So mm -hmm. when you get to your classes, your first the first impression you leave with your professors, with your lecturers, it really matters a lot. So that they can also respect you and if there is any challenge you are facing, they will understand that, okay, this person is, I mean, really serious, but he's right. trying to just adapt and cope. So it's very important. <laughs> Good. So in the end, you got how many offers? So at the end, I got uh, two offers. I got two offers, and I chose you uh, now. Yeah, yes. I chose you now. Yes. <laughs> Good. I chose All right. Thank you very much. I wish you the best as... You continue your PhD. I know you're going to do great. I have no <laughs> doubts about it. <laughs> so, that's great. That's yeah. great. <laughs> keep, keep working out and um, we'll keep in touch.